All right guys, today we're in one of the coolest parks in one of the coolest neighborhoods in one of the coolest cities in the country. Laurelhurst, so this is a very quintessential kind of old money Portland neighborhood on the east side of the river. A lot of neighborhoods that are similar to this, like uh, Dunthorpe, Irvington, Eastmoreland, for example, tree-lined streets, big, beautiful old homes developed really around the turn of the century, around uh, kind of early 1900s. Um, so again, a lot of really cool, rich history here. This is a neighborhood that even if this isn't an area that you necessarily see yourself living, I think it's objectively one of the most beautiful neighborhoods in all of Portland. And in this video, we're going to take a look. Stay tuned to learn more. All right, hey, real quick, if this is your first time to the channel or you've been here and you haven't already and you wanna get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap that little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. And now I present to you Laurelhurst. Let's take a look at Laurelhurst. So this is a neighborhood in Portland that is pretty sought after for somebody who is looking to be near downtown in the city. The area itself, the neighborhood of Laurelhurst itself is very residential, but bordered by uh, some you know, very main throughways. So you have Highway 84, uh, or Interstate 84 rather, to the north, as well as Sandy Boulevard. So the Hollywood District is right there on the north side of Laurelhurst. Uh, on the south side of Laurelhurst, you have Stark and Burnside. So these are major thoroughfares that run east-west. In fact, Burnside is what separates north and south in Portland directionally. So most of Laurelhurst is in northeast Portland. Uh, as far as you know the residential area but in southeast portland uh, bordered by stark to the south you have laurelhurst park and then some houses around the park they're very similar to what you get north of burnside so going around laurelhurst it's going to be very uh sim it's a very similar feel as far as the homes you get some big, uh, some really large homes. You do get some more medium sized and even some modest or smaller homes. But you know, this area, just like a lot of areas that are similar to it in Portland have a lot of craftsman style homes. So that is the majority of what you get. A lot of character, every house looks a little bit different, but a lot of houses really do have that true Portland craftsman style. You get some Dutch colonials, some, some more, some bungalows in here. There's even a little bit of mid-century modern in here and you get some Cape Cods, you, you know, so there is quite a bit of variety, some tutors, uh, for example. So uh, definitely a, a lot of variety and, you know, unlike a lot of developments that were built, say in the last 40 years, where every house kind of looks the same, so much character in here, all these old growth trees, tree-lined streets, I mean, there is so much character in Laurelhurst, and I think that that is part of what makes it such an attractive area for a lot of people. Uh, again, you are right in the city, so if you want to be in more of an urban setting, but have more of a residential feel in your immediate surroundings, Laurelhurst is going to be a great option for you. There's a center point right in the middle of Laurelhurst that's a big circle. Uh, so it's the co-circle on the intersection of, I believe, Gleason and Cesar Chavez. So that's going to be right in the heart of Laurelhurst. So it's this big turnaround uh, where, you know, if you continue north, you're going to get up to I-84. Uh, say going south on Cesar Chavez, you can get access to all of the really cool hip neighborhoods in southeast Portland. So going down Cesar Chavez, again, I mean, you're gonna hit from Stark to the south end of the neighborhood, going down to Hawthorne and Belmont and Division, uh, down to Powell, uh, you know, all of these streets that I just mentioned and others as well have these strips 20, 25 plus blocks uh, of entertainment commercial district where you have some of the best restaurants coffee shops, bars, breweries in Portland, as well as a lot of boutiques, secondhand stores, galleries. I mean, there's so much to do concentrated in one area in Southeast Portland. And this corridor along Cesar Chavez gives you access to all of it. So if you lived in Laurelhurst, 
you know, it's it's a less urban feeling area than some of these other little neighborhoods in Southeast Portland, but you have, again, quick, easy access to it. And similarly, you can get north on Cesar Chavez. Once you pass I-84, you're going to get into like Grant Park, Alameda, Beaumont, Wilshire. So these are neighborhoods that have a little more of a similar feel to Laurelhurst and you know some really great parks up there um you know so there's a, a lot to do a lot to see some of the coolest northeast portland neighborhoods are you know really right here as well so a lot of really cool areas in your immediate surrounding of course if you go you know due west you're going to get into downtown portland burnside kind of being the main thoroughfare there so you know you can get into downtown portland in under 10 minutes and then of course you can go east on burnside and really go all the way out to link up with highway 26 get out to mount hood pretty quick easy access going east to the columbia river gorge a lot of outdoor activities a lot of the things that of course a lot of people like to engage in living in portland so this whole area was developed uh, just at the turn of the century so early 1900s this area was owned by william ladd which uh, i think was the portland mayor a couple times uh, really kind of a real estate mogul had a ton of land this area in fact I think it was about four or five hundred acres of land it was all cattle ranch so where I'm at today in Laurelhurst Park is you know the remaining green space basically where you have uh, the pond here spring a little spring fed lake but this whole neighborhood kind of rolling hills a little bit uh, was a cattle ranch. So this was all sold to a developer, developed mostly around the same time, again, early 1900s. So the majority of what you get in here is about 100 years old, maybe 75 to 100 years old. Um, it's pretty dense, you know, so this is kind of a true city neighborhood. Again, very residential, mostly all residential, but you're not getting a lot of big lots. So a little bit of front yard, a little bit of backyard, and then, you know, the houses are pretty, pretty packed in here. So that's going to be pretty typical for a neighborhood that is close into downtown, really in any city and in, in, in Portland, certainly no exception. But again, the historic charm, uh, just going around, you know, all of these streets in Laurel, Laurelhurst, it's really pretty impressive and, and really scenic again, objectively a beautiful neighborhood, even if it's not necessarily your style. I think a really big contrast when you look at kind of an old original neighborhood in a major metro area like Laurelhurst versus a new, more you know, newly developed area like you get out in the suburbs, especially pushing out against that urban growth boundary is here, you have all these old growth trees, you have you know, all this vegetation, it's very mature, and in a place like Laurelhurst, very well kept too, uh, which is super nice. So it's not like overgrown, but it is very thick, you know, uh, vegetation, uh, a lot of trees, a lot of big, beautiful old trees uh, in here. So, you know, again, when you put that up against an area that is more newly developed, you might have, you know, little to no vegetation. You know, everything's been recently planted um, or it's it's much uh, kind of thinner, much more sparse as far as, you know, what you get with, with trees and, and bushes and things like that. So I know for some people aesthetically that, you know, that that is important. Uh, I know that for people who are looking for a community like Laurelhurst, again, aesthetically, what it offers is a big attraction in and of itself. This is an area that is pretty insulated, and I think a lot of people really do like that uh, yeah, about Laurelhurst. Um, it, you know, in the the original development plans and when the land was sold over a hundred years ago, it was wrote in that there wasn't going to be any multifamily development. You know, no apartments, things like that, for example. So. You know, you get a lot of, it's really it's really homogenous, uh, you know, going through here. And I think, again, that does create an environment that does feel a little more insulated, in particular being so close to the city and being surrounded by other urban residential areas. When you're in Laurelhurst, you don't necessarily feel like you are right in the city necessarily, unless you're on one of the main streets. So if you're on Stark, Gleason, Cesar Chavez, Burnside, Sandy, you know, of course, up to the freeway on 84, you, you start to see pretty quickly that you are in the city. And honestly, the biggest thing that probably sticks out is the, the homelessness that you see in this area. And I think that's, the, it's a huge issue, obviously everywhere in Portland, you know, to, to some degree or another, but Laurelhurst is an area that again, being so insulated, being so residential, certainly an area where there's a sharper contrast, right? So, you know, here I am at the park, 
um, you know, parked on one of the streets, uh, lining lining the park here. And you know, there's a there's a couple cars right there, right where I parked, where there was clearly people living in it. I mean, I saw saw somebody sleeping on a bench, uh, you know, just o over that way a little bit. So, again. It, it, it is a bit of a sharper contrast in an area like this when you see some of those things and everybody's tolerance is going to be a little bit different right as far as what you know they're going to put up with but certainly you know seeing that type of thing and if there's any perception that there is kind of a, a safety risk living in this area uh, that's obviously going to be a turnoff for anyone one way or another so it really has a little bit of a checkered past, like a lot of neighborhoods like this in Portland. So the land gets sold to a developer. Here's the price. You know, here's more or less what you can do. Here's how it's going to be laid out. Oh, by the way, here are some covenants saying that, you know, only white people can can own property here. And that was the case here in Laurel, Laurelhurst. I know it was the case in Dunthorpe and other neighborhoods in Portland. So obviously that's something that's really terrible and you know hasn't been around for a long time but this neighborhood like others like it in portland you know have continued over the years to kind of you know push against outside pressure and you know more normal things that you would see nowadays like you know in the 70s for example as portland was establishing its public transit you know they wanted to put the light rail on burnside burnside cuts right through laurelhurst and uh, the neighborhood association really pushed out against that so now you know the light rail is on the north side of the neighborhood running along i-84 uh, more recently the portland infill project you know allowing for you know less zoning restrictions on putting like adus and uh, more dwellings on your lot. Uh, that's something that here in Laurelhurst, you know, people have really, really pushed against, whereas there are a lot of other neighborhoods in Portland, you know, a little more quirky in terms of what you get. You know, it kind of makes sense. It's even more dense than, than here. And, um, you know, there's a lot more renters in certain neighborhoods, uh, you know, where a lot of people are doing that. And, and Laurelhurst, again, um, you know, it's something that at least the neighborhood association has has pushed back against a little bit. But I think nowadays in Laurelhurst, I mean, you're going to find uh, a diverse population for sure, which is great. Uh, although it does feel still pretty homogenous, you know, in particular, just because so many of the houses are so similar, they have that old historic charm. Um, but, you know, the, the size, everything being very well kept, you know, a lot of beautiful landscaping, things like that. You, you get a lot of consistency going out, although you get a lot of different character from house to house. But again, this type of neighborhood might not be exactly what you're looking for. It's certainly an area that I think a lot of people would appreciate what it offers just driving around. And you know, that's why you gotta reach out to us and we can talk about what you're looking for in a neighborhood, you know, what you would like to be close to, you know, as far as your commute, you know, and we can really start narrowing down what the best options would be for you. And if, if, if you want to have that conversation, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, click the link down below in the description of the video, schedule a Zoom call with us, and we can, you know, we can start chatting more about that and really start narrowing things down for you. Uh, but Laurelhurst, it's, it's a pretty big area. I think it's about a square mile, you know, so, so it takes up a, a pretty big chunk of, again, mostly northeast, but some in southeast as well. There's about 4,500 people who live here uh, as well. So it's a, it's a pretty dense community. I think you'll find a lot of strong community overall in this area. Again, like with the Neighborhood Association, for example. Now, this is an area like Eastmoreland and like Dunthorpe and like Irvington and like Grant Park and like Alameda uh, and some other areas in Portland that have really this old historic charm, very wooded, again, built around the 1900s, really cool architecture. This is an area that is going to come with a little bit of a higher price tag. So the median sale price right now in Laurelhurst is $940,000. The median list price is $950,000. So, you know, if you're spending around that, odds are you're probably getting a four bedroom home that is at least about 2,400 square feet. Uh, very well could be pushing th uh, 3,000 square feet. Uh, and you know, you could be getting five bedrooms as well. Now you could be looking at a, sorry, I had a bee uh, flying by. You could be looking at a, a little bit of a smaller home too that could be eight, $900,000. It would probably have to be really nicely updated uh, to carry that price tag, but you still could be looking at a three bedroom, you know, 17, 1800 square foot house that could, again, still be 
uh, $800,000, dollars And some of the larger homes that have really been well cared for, really nicely updated and remodeled, you know, you're probably pushing 1.2 to 1.5 million potentially, uh, just depending on what it offers overall. But I think that is something you'll see a ton in this neighborhood, you know, albeit the homes in here are very old on average or relatively old for Portland. I mean, you know, we're on the West Coast, so it's not like we have homes that are 200 years old plus, but so many of these old historic homes have been really well cared, uh, really well cared for over the years. And in most cases, you know, they continue to be remodeled. So from the interior, uh, then to the exterior as well, in terms of maintenance and again, just that pride of ownership, landscaping. I mean, you, you drive around, and it's, it's pretty evident that the people who live in this area take really good care of their homes. And I think a lot, of, uh, a lot of people, something that's really cool that you see, a lot of people when they are updating these properties are retaining the uh, historical charm you know, of the era uh, in a lot of ways. Now, that's not gonna be, be the case you know, for every house necessarily. And some people will go for something a little more modern, but uh, so much of what you see as far as a lot of the updates that have been done have, have really, again, you know, ret retained that uh, historical aspect. Um, you'll, you'll see a lot of, of like original hardwood floors, for example, or original trim and molding, you know, that have just been kind of restored, restained, things like that over the years and super cool to see. So. If Laurelhurst is an area that sounds interesting to you, if you want to learn more about Laurelhurst or areas that are similar, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click that link down below in the description of the video and schedule a Zoom call with us. And on that call, again, we can talk about your budget, your timeline, how close in the city you want to be, really narrow down what you're looking for. So when the time comes, we can have a game plan in place and, and really hit the ground running. Sorry, that bee is not leaving me alone. Uh, if this video was helpful, make sure to hit the like button. That helps us out a lot. If you want to get more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Tap that little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. As always, we really appreciate you watching. Until next time, we'll talk to you later.